Hey yo, welcome back again. We're on day three of volume. In this next installment, we'll be talking about a new figure. Day one, we did rectangular prisms. Day two, we did cylinders. And now in day three, we're going to be covering cones. Before we get started, I just want to clear up some misconceptions that I've been seeing on the work that's been handed in. Firstly, you must be clicking submit or turn in when you're finishing the work. I'm finding some of uh, you are filling out the Google Sheet, but not pressing submit, so I just find your work. Two, remember that volume is always shown in cubic units, so you're looking for that little three as the exponent there. Some of you were choosing answers that had the little two as the exponent, and that means squared, not for volume. So just like in the two days prior, let's discuss first, what is it that we're talking about today? Today, again, we're talking about volume, which, as we know, is a measure of how much space something takes up. And it is only going to be used for three-dimensional figures. It's not like I don't think you know what a cone is, but just for clarity, let's take a look. So here's a few different versions of things that are in the shape of a cone. Uh, it may not be as obvious when looking at these items that the cone has one rounded face. Okay, You can see it in the blue um, drawing of the cone on the left side, but in the other two, it's not as clear. But these are basic uh, cone descriptions, and they just describe a basic shape of a lot of things that exist in real life. Things can be conic, meaning they're shaped like a cone. Now, as far as how a cone's volume can be calculated or determined, well, the first key is to understand what shape a cone really is when compared to shapes that we've used already. So as it turns out, a cone has a very specific relationship with certain shapes. All right, so what dimensions does the cone have? Well, exactly the same dimensions that we had on the cylinder. It has a radius and a height, which I'm going to highlight for you here, the radius over there in purple, and then we're going to do the height over here in blue, I think. Let's see if I'm right. And, yep. Okay, so those are the dimensions that we're going to use because, once again, we have a rounded surface being used, so it is not going to be length, width, and height. Here we have a pretty brief description of how cones and cylinders are related. It takes three cones to make a cylinder, as you can see on the left, and on the right you see as you take the water from each of the cones and fill it up, eventually the three cones will fill a cylinder. Now this has a lot to do with how we're going to use the formula, because if you remember from yesterday, the formula for cylinder volume was pi r squared h. So if it takes three cones to make one cylinder, Another way of saying that is that it is one-third. A cone is one-third of a cylinder that would have the same radius and height. So then the formula, obviously, is going to take that into account. So now we here we have our first example, a blue cone. We only have two dimensions we're concerned with, which would be the height and the radius, which is half the distance across the circle. Now, notice the formula we have here, same as the cylinder formula, except it's one-third of it. We substitute the 4 where the r was and the 12 where the h was. We evaluate 4 squared to make 16, then multiply 16 by 12, get 192. Now, notice I'm showing you that we're going to multiply around the pi first. One-third of 192 is 64, pull out the calculator, we're going to get this number right here. We need to round this number to the nearest tenth, so we're going to round the zero by using the six. The six tells us to round up, and so we get our final answer here at the bottom. Let's take a look at another problem. Remember, if anything seems like it's going too quickly for you, you can always pause, rewatch, replay, 
Take screenshots and be careful when you're answering the questions on the quiz. For those of you watching the videos, it is really paying off. For those of you listening to this, you know that already because those not watching the videos can hear me right now. So let's take a look at our second problem right here as it makes its way onto our screen. So we have another cylinder. In this case, we start with the formula again, which is one third pi r squared h. Eight is the radius and six is the height. So there's where we substitute them. Eight squared is 64. 64 times six is 384. Now again, we're gonna multiply around the pi first to get our answers in terms of pi. And one third of 384 is 128. And then if we take our calculator and do 128 times pi, we get this number right here. We're going to use the two to tell us what to do with the one. The two is gonna tell the one to stay. And so this is gonna be our answer and it's going to be in terms of cubic centimeters. Very important. Okay, uh, before we take a look at our third example over here, remember we're not doing any sort of conversions of measures between customary and metric, no centimeters to inches. So if you see that on the quiz, like somebody pointed it out to me yesterday, that was just an error of mine that the answers were written in inches and the question was in centimeters. Okay, so I just want you to know that for our purposes, it's just the number that matters and then you put the correct units with it. So again, we're gonna start with the formula. In this case, five is the radius and nine is the height. Five squared is 25. 25 times nine is 225. Again, we multiply around the pi and we find what's one third of 225, which is 75. We then can take that number and put it into the calculator, 75 pi, and it gives us this as our answer. We then are going to use the one in the hundredths place to tell us what to do with the number in the tenths place, which is a six. The one tells it to stay, and so our answer is like this. As you can see, just like I mentioned, I accidentally put it in centimeters, but the question itself was in inches. Don't concern yourselves with that for right now. All that's important right now is that you're doing the math properly and looking for the appropriate answer. Okay, so those are our three examples from the day. Uh, as requested, one more time, I'm going to look at one example a little more closely just in case there's something you might have missed. It would be a really good time to do a screenshot or a pause because we have all the information in front of us. So as always, our first step is always to start with the correct formula. One third pi r square h is the formula for the volume of a cone. From there, we're going to substitute carefully the number that's given for radius and the number that's given for height in the places of R and H. It's not like rectangular prism where it doesn't matter where you put them because one of the numbers gets squared. So the number that we're going to put in for the radius is going to be 2, while the number that we put in for the height is going to be 7. Now you'll notice that the answer right below this 29.3 was achieved without doing all those middle steps. As it turns out, no surprise to some of you that have been doing this already, if you enter the whole statement into a calculator, you actually can get the answer or an approximation of the answer. Notice the equal sign has the squiggly look to it because it's not exactly 27.3, I mean 29.3. And then the volume of the cone is about 29.3 cubic feet. I got the right uh, units in this one. Good job, Marcus. And what you're going to do to display that is put 29.3, remember that's about the right answer, feet, and then it's to the third power. Volume measures are measures of cubic space. Real three-dimensional items that can be seen in real life, so they cannot be squares. That little three over there is the exponent is an important part because all volume measures will be measured in cubic units, not in squares. 